I mean, it's, it's, it's a mess out there, right? And we need to be resilient to that. So the thing to know about chaos engineering, it's not about creating chaos. It's about acknowledging the chaos that already exists and preparing for it and mitigating it and avoiding the impact of that chaos. So if that's, that's where you gotta be thinking about chaos engineering. So how do you do chaos engineering? This is a one slide summary of how to do chaos engineering. Chaos engineering is ultimately at its core a scientific method. This is a, a circular cycle, but I'm gonna start with steady state. What the heck is steady state? Steady state means your workload, the workload under test, is operating within design parameters, and you have to be able to measure that. You have to be able to assign metrics to say what does it mean to operate within design parameters. Then as a hypothesis. The hypothesis is if some bad thing happens and you specify the bad thing, if an EC2 instance dies, if an availability zone uh, is not available, if a network link goes out, then my system, because I designed it that way, will maintain steady state. It will stay within those operational parameters. Now, if you didn't design it that way, don't do the chaos engineering, right? But if you designed it that way, you're testing that. So you run the experiment. You simulate that EC2 failure. You simulate that network link outage. And then you validate, you verify, was the hypothesis confirmed? If the hypothesis was not confirmed, oh, OK, we experienced some sort of outage. We went outside of the established parameters. We did not maintain steady state. You need to improve. You improve by redesigning, applying the best practices in the reliability pillar, and then you test it again. You run the experiment again. Oh, now the hypothesis is confirmed, and we're back to steady state, and the whole thing repeats all over again. 